in today's video we're gonna dive back into the upcoming storms as we still are in the heart of severe weather season and we need to discuss multiple potential larger events here as we have a few stronger low pressure systems moving across the nation hail strong winds tornadoes will of course be a threat but flooding and other concerns will be also present. So let's just dive into things. Let's take a look starting tomorrow on Friday, May 17th. And what we see here is showery and thunderstorm activity uh, across a lot of the deeper south central and southeastern states. And this does actually expand up through the Ohio Valley and into the Great Lakes as well, as you can see. Uh, we do have a 1,005 low pressure system down here, so expect the most intense of these thunderstorms and showers to be in the deeper south areas there. It doesn't really come as a surprise either way, but nearby that low is going to be stronger and more intense instability, of course. We see uh, a 991 low pressure system here over kind of south central Canada. Uh, we can see that this is causing a lot of cold air to dive southward here over the west. This is allowing for some potential wintry weather for northern Washington, northern Idaho, and northern Montana there. Still pretty common this time of year, of course. Let's just take this towards Saturday afternoon on May 18th, and what we see is plenty of of thunderstorms and showers here for the deeper southeast here in the kind of gulf states up and down the mid-atlantic and ohio valley areas and then even up into the northeast there so we are seeing plenty of states in the eastern half of the nation seeing thunderstorm and shower activity there for saturday on may 18th for sunday here on may 19th what we see is showers and snowfall happening here across the northwest northern rockies and the northern plains here as well over the southeast, we see Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, Kentucky, portions of Alabama as well, seeing some thunderstorms and showers as well as West Virginia. I forgot to mention that. Um, so we are seeing a lot of different states dealing with uh, a multitude of different uh, thunderstorms for the southeast, showers perhaps here for the northern plains, and even snowfall here for Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. We do have a 997 here developing for Kansas there, western Kansas, on Sunday, May 19th, and that could transpire and actually lead towards more activity. It really doesn't here, honestly. It really breaks up, and we do see this 1002 up to the north perhaps featuring more of a cold front look. This could bring some severe weather possibilities uh, or at least thunderstorms along that line. But I would say the southern low is really low precipitation, to, uh, you know, minimally impactful is what I would say. By Tuesday on the 21st here of May, we see a 1,000 millibar low pressure center over Wisconsin. Cold front look here, warm front look there. And what we get overall is surging warmth in the eastern states here with some cooler weather trying to move in uh, here from the central states down into the east. So expect... Potential severe weather along this area in the Midwest there for Tuesday on the 21st. Wednesday here on the 22nd, it's a 988 over here that takes kind of the spotlight in eastern Canada. We do have a secondary low down there for uh, Ohio is 1,002. And overall, this stretching cold front would look something like this and bring potential thunderstorms and severe weather all the way along it. So for a lot of the central and eastern states, as this thing stretches through, That'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time frame. Uh, we definitely could be looking at some activity along that area. Uh, it reaches the eastern seaboard sometime uh, overnight Wednesday into Thursday, uh, bringing some cooler temperatures with it, of course. Uh, I will say we do have cooler temperatures here from that cold front, but we have a low over Wyoming there and diving cold air for the west, and I do suspect we will see a warming pattern very quickly after this as a result. Uh, speaking of that 996, we have pretty heavy snowfall in between Nevada, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, even down through Wyoming. Could be more Rocky Mountain snowfall on the way, uh, but we do have showers and thunderstorms present throughout a lot of the plains, uh, the upper Midwest, and even the deeper south there uh, for Thursday. Friday on the 24th, what we see here is this 999 millibar low pressure center over Montana. Pretty strong cold front look here potential for severe weather along all of this would be possible 997 here with perhaps a warm front so a little bit of an interesting setup uh kind of like a double frontal boundary and honestly this is probably the primary low by this point so it's really really messy but i think thunderstorms and severe weather are possible along all of these areas here for friday on the 24th and then on saturday the 25th here 
Uh, we see again kind of just a pocket of thunderstorm activity. I would say the most chance is going to be for Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, but also there's a pretty decent shot for severe weather down there in the southeast on the state as well. Now, as we take a look at this European AI model, we really want to pick up on the trends here. We get a deeper south kind of Dixie Alley severe weather event here for the weekend. Uh, and then we start to get more activity um, for kind of the plains and Midwest area. So this pocket in here uh, is where we're going to start to see a bit of activity here. Starting Monday the 20th, there's uh, Tuesday the 21st, Wednesday the 22nd. We do get kind of a return to the deeper south, but it does stretch all the way up into the Ohio Valley. So this would be kind of a multi-state severe weather event for Wednesday. Thursday here, uh, we do have some lower pressure across the central plains. I'd say the best chance for severe weather is this underneath area for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. As we keep going, we see a lot of that similar activity um, with a lot of low pressure systems present uh, in these plains areas and then moving eastward bringing kind of a plethora of severe weather and thunderstorms as well as showers across a lot of these different states. As we take a look at the total precipitation, it's pretty uh, evident here that we see these lows really originating here and either moving south or to the north from that point. But regardless, uh, everywhere east of the plains, there is seeing above average precipitation still. We've been talking about this for about a week, but we do see the northwest is picking up on a bit more activity. So we see some storms perhaps originating from this area, which is quite interesting. And that is the reason for this above average activity in that northwest corridor. That is something new for sure. Total snowfall, very surprising here in late May. We've seen a massive uptick for the Rockies and Cascades. Perhaps one to two, maybe even three feet for the northern Rockies over the next 10 days. Uh, a few inches to perhaps a foot here for the Cascades. And then still none expected for the Sierra Nevada, really. Uh, the southern Rockies, we do pick up perhaps a couple of inches uh, in a few spots. Now, the temperature pattern, uh, we do see some cooler temperatures able to make their way in along the eastern seaboard here for the next couple of days. Overall, we are warm in the east, cold in the west. Uh, so we see something like this is the pattern. So I'll do a little jet stream look. But something like this is what we're really looking at uh, for the next few days into perhaps midweek here. Uh, we do see a cool down that is able to make its way in. Uh, around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but still the East Coast wants to stay warm. By that weekend, things get a little bit messy, but we somehow kind of get back into a cold in the West, warm in the East pattern by the time we're looking at the end of May. So we get back to this type of a pattern. But again, there is some cooler areas in here. This is not a full-blown heat wave in the East by any means. Uh, it's quite messy, as I've mentioned a few times here. And there will be cooler areas among the overall warmer a half of the nation and perhaps as we can see out west warmer areas throughout the overall cooler half of the nation so don't expect it to be true for everywhere but most of this model run was warm in the east cold in the west but there is a pocket there in the middle where the things do flip and we see warmth out west cold in the east let's take a look here at the storm prediction center and we have a whopping five general thunderstorm risk areas here one for the northern plains here, one that's very large for the southwest up through the upper Midwest and Great Lakes, one for North Carolina and Virginia, one for southern New England, and then one for southern Florida. This is the area where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory, of course. Uh, we have four marginal risk areas in the darker greens, one for Wisconsin and surrounding states, one for Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, and Tennessee, one for southern Florida, and then one for portions of New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and perhaps half a county in the Florida Panhandle. These are areas where we expect isolated severe weather to occur, so keep that in mind. Uh, there over Texas and Louisiana, we have a slight risk in the yellow. That is where we expect scattered about severe weather reports to come in for those areas. And then that orange area from Texas in through Louisiana, that is your level three enhanced risk area, and that is where we expect a little bit more widespread severe weather to occur. So definitely a bigger day for today on Thursday, May 16th. Day two, uh, we see somewhat of the same. We see two general thunderstorm risk areas again. Well, that's way less than we had, so I shouldn't say again, but two general thunderstorm risk areas there. Two marginal risk areas that are quite large, so again, isolated severe weather in there. And then for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida, uh, a level two slight risk where we expect scattered about severe weather reports in there. Day three, uh, we don't have a slight risk as of now, but we do have two general thunderstorm risk areas, one there for Colorado 
And then one here for a lot of the east. We do have a marginal risk in here as well from southern Louisiana, kind of southeastern Louisiana, I should say, all the way up through a lot of North Carolina. So the southeast area in general, expecting some isolated severe weather within there. We do also have an extended day outlook here, as you can see, uh, where we do expect at least a slight risk here for Nebraska and Kansas for the day on Sunday, May 19th. So definitely be on the lookout for that later on this weekend. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.